and essentially when you're pr you're playing scales you're practicing different scale patterns right you're practicing all these different patterns and the question is when you're learning these patterns will is it ever going to all come together is it ever going to, am i ever going to stop being able to think about it and the answer is absolutely yes we have a process for specifically guiding you to that moment to that point and in fact it turns out that there is actually just one pattern that covers that repeats over the entire fretboard that you can literally play uh, in any major scale any ma uh, minor scale you know any major key any minor key and all the modes with literally just one pattern the reason why you may not have ever heard of it before or the reason why most people have never seen it is because the pattern actually repeats across seven strings, not six. So if you had an, you have an invisible string right here, I can we or we show you, of course, how the pattern works, how the pattern actually spans seven strings, and how that same pattern just repeats in different areas along the neck. It's just like if you've ever seen a piano. Uh, on a piano keyboard, there's one section of notes with 12 different keys, with two black keys and three black keys. Uh, you can look up a picture of a piano if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, or you can go to a music store or something. But there's there's this one section. It's 12 notes. There's two black keys and three black keys. That same section repeats over and over and over and over and over again on the piano. That's all there is on the piano, right? There's only 12 notes in Western music. So there's the same 12 notes repeat over and over and over and over again. On the guitar, there's an invisible seventh string that there's this seven string pattern that contains the seven notes in whatever major or minor key that you're playing in. And that, just like a piano, that same pattern repeats over and over and over and over and over again. And it actually glues together all of the different scales that are out there, the major scales, the minor scales, the modes. It actually ties all those together into literally just one pattern. So you can play any of those modes with just one pattern. But that's just the first step. So as I've already talked about earlier, the mistake that most people make um, and it's not their fault because they don't know it, right? You don't know what you don't know. But what most people do is they get stuck in first gear. First gear is learning the actual patterns themselves, right? And the only reason, by the way, the only reason we learn different patterns and connect them together, the only reason, listen closely, the only reason we learn those different patterns and connect them all together is so you can see how the entire fretboard connects. And then after you see that, you have that light bulb moment and you see the seven string pattern that I'm talking about. We call it the big repeating pattern or the freedom key system is part of that, right? Then you no longer have to use those all those different patterns. You see how the entire fretboard connects. Now, is it useful to use the individual patterns? Of course it is, right? You can still think about those or use certain little finger patterns whenever you're playing. But the point is we wanna go to the next gear, right? We wanna go to the next level and the next level is uh, once you actually learn the master roadmap, once you learn where all the right notes are by connecting these paths, you just discover that it's really only one centering pattern repeat over and over again. Now it's time to start listening, just like we talked about a little bit uh, a little bit ago. You need to shift your attention away from focusing on patterns. The patterns are not going to produce music for you. This is not a musical instrument. Most people say the guitar is a musical instrument. It's not. The guitar is just a machine. If I just put the guitar like this, and I just have my guitar right here, how long do I have to wait before it starts making music? I'm gonna be waiting forever, right? It doesn't do anything, it just sits here. The music comes from you. Like, any music that I'm playing comes from me. It's the emotions, it's the feelings that I'm trying to express. Now, those scale patterns that we're learning, Number one, not only are they for getting you to be able to play the right notes in the key without having to think about the names of the notes, it gives you an easy way just to hit the right notes so that you can begin practicing and playing with, let's say, backing tracks and listening to the sounds that you're making so you can start to make music out of those sounds. That's the second gear. Most people get stuck in first gear of thinking that the patterns or they're focusing on the actual patterns themselves and wondering, okay, when are these patterns gonna, you know, finally all come together and make music for me? And that's that's the thing, it, it, it never will. Gear number one is just for learning where the patterns are. When you, like, let's say you're in first grade. Well, the purpose of first grade is to graduate and then go to second grade, right? So after we're in first grade, uh, and I'm not saying that learning all these patterns is first grade easy, it's really not. Um, but after we learn the patterns, after we learn how it connects together, then we need to graduate from doing that. You can still practice and keep your, what some people call your technique up, right? You can still practice the actual patterns just to make sure you have them down, just to keep your, your wheels greased, so to speak, just to make sure you're in shape to play guitar, your fingers are in shape. 
but you got to move on to the next gear. And the next gear is using the notes, using the right notes that you already know because of the patterns to start listening to the sounds that you're making and start to make music out of those sounds, start to be expressive uh, with those sounds. And how do you do that? Well, like I said before, we have uh, the courses on all the different types of um, ways that you can express notes on the guitar. Specifically in Irresistible Phrasing 101, you're gonna know how to um, use things like what people call phrasing tools, which are you know hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, bends, those kinds of things. But you're also gonna be able to add in other courses the other um, elements of music, which is what I call framework, knowing where all the right notes are. You know That's the first step. Uh, fitness, getting your fingers and your hands in shape to be able to do stretch like this. Look, my fingers could never, ever do this when I first started playing guitar. In fact, I couldn't do this until somebody showed me how to start doing this, right? And, and I, it wasn't just like, there's a trick and then all I, can, I can all of a sudden do it. No, your fingers are like athletes and the guitar neck is just like a playing field. You literally, just like a basketball player has to go to the gym um, and, and work out and do drills on the court to be able to perform well in the game, same thing with your fingers, right? There's no shortcuts. There's no magic pill, as some people would have you believe. You know, learn this one little trick and, you know, you'll magically be a guitar god in five days. Come on, really? No, that's that's not that's not reality, okay? There are specific drills that we can do. We have a course called Unlimited Dexterity, which will get your fingers to being able to look like this, to being able to move fluidly across the neck. And if you actually do the exercise that I show you, it will happen because of the law of cause and effect. Just like if I throw this pick across the room, it's gonna go across the room and hit, on the uh, hit the floor. And if I throw a ball up in the air, it's gonna come back down to the ground. It's just how it works, right? If you just do the steps that we lay out for you, it just works. If it doesn't work, then that means you didn't work it. I promise you it works as long as you work it, okay? Now, the other elements of music, of course, that we train you on specifically um, to answer this question as well, that is uh, also harmony. So uh, harmony is any two or more notes played at the same time. What is the contrast of the notes? How does it make you feel? How do chords work? How do I know where the right uh, chords are? Uh, rhythm, which we've already talked about, which is pretty self-explanatory. Most people think of rhythm, uh, they think of rhythm playing rhythm guitar, meaning like playing chords, like I'm playing a song um, or I'm singing or I'm playing. But the reality is every single thing you play has rhythm. Even if you're playing just one note, that's a rhythm, right? There's different types of rhythms you can do. The better your rhythm skills are, the better you're going to sound as a musician. Okay. And the last one is phrasing. Phrasing is the first thing that we talked about a second ago, which is using things like phrasing tools, such as bends and slides. And it's just changing the way that you approach playing each note to give it a little more flavor, to get a little, to give it a little more spice. Don't get stuck in first gear. Don't only focus on playing the patterns. Just do that as first gear, first grade. When it's time to graduate, you need to move on to second grade. Uh, and second grade is, you know, the classes get a little harder, right? In second grade, you have to stretch your skills just a little bit more. That's when you start incorporating the rhythm and the phrasing and the harmony with your playing. And you have to really listen to what you're doing and train your ear to hear what you want to hear in your head. You hear the sounds in your head and you work on playing those sounds on your guitar. That's the ultimate goal. Uh, just a shout out at uh, Charlie C put in the on YouTube, but this great thank you. And 30 days have come so far and my love for the guitar has exploded. I spend 30 minutes on the ultimate dexterity, then just jam uh, out my feelings, exploring fretboard for hours. Isn't that awesome, awesome, Charlie? Thanks so much for sharing that, man. That is awesome. And again, that's what I referred to earlier as what I consider literally the best feeling on the planet. When you just pick up the guitar, you hear some music and you just exactly what Charlie just said he's been doing. Even after 30 days, guys, he's just picking up the guitar and exploring the neck, exploring the fretboard for hours. It's so much fun. Like there's, It never stops being fun. It's so amazing. And that's why we do what we do, to help you have the same feeling. <laughs>